It's officially draft season when some of these decisions get made. Can Kenny Pickett get himself through the end of his evaluation? Kayvon Thibodeau, you might as well start your vows now because you're not going to see him again. And how do we build a defense in the draft? What's your philosophy? What's ours? Let's get into it at Locked On NFL Draft. You are Locked On NFL Draft. Your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Locked On NFL Draft. I'm your host, former NFL and NFL defensive back, Eric Crocker. And as always, I'm joined by my guy, Ryan Tracy. And we want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. But first, we want to talk to you about our good friends over at On Location. On Location is the official hospitality partner of the NFL, and it's the only place to score a -a once-in-a-lifetime trip to the Super Bowl and get tickets and experience package. All right, visit onlocationexp.com slash SB56 for more information or search Super Bowl On Location. All right, man, we're getting into it today. Some big news coming out, a couple of different different things. And we're starting with Kenny Pickett, who lost his office coordinator, Mark Whipple. Mark Whipple, a guy who's, I mean, he's been around coaching for years, since 1980. He actually was a quarterback. He played for, well, I don't know if that's the Browns or what, but, I mean, he's coached <laughs> from, it looks like, the, the NFL to Arizona Wranglers. I don't even know what league that is. Uh, all throughout college, back to the NFL, Pittsburgh Steelers, Philadelphia Eagles, uh, I mean, he's been around Miami, Cleveland Browns, Pittsburgh. Uh, he now he's a Pittsburgh officer co- coordinator and quarterback coach. And Kenny Pickett, at one of the most important times, you know, of his life and the biggest part of his evaluation coming down to the end where everybody's going to be watching him. All eyes are going to be on him. And he loses his officer coordinator. How does that potentially kind of hurt him moving forward? I, I, I tried to be you know, down the middle about this, but I can't, I feel like, you know, I'm taking the point of view. If I'm like Kenny's older brother, right? Like I know you're 64 years old and you've had a long and illustrious career. Can't you make it through one more ball game? <laughs> you know, can't, can't you help us get our guy over the hump? Cause the only two things can come from this. Kenny Pickett is arguably, and, and there's a lot of argument, but he is in the argument for the top quarterback in this draft in what is right. a weak class. If he can have a showing in this bowl game that really highlights not only the fact that he's led this offense and they've turned it from a run game to a pass game and and he's led that evolution, been the guy at the helm, but if he can really stand out, he can solidify himself, not only as the top quarterback in this class, but maybe a top 10 pick. There's that realm of upside from it, right? But he needs all the help that he can get. This is a late developer. This guy with a huge season, obviously. But to lose the guy in your ear calling the plays, one I mean, one game left. If I'm his family, like I'm losing my mind for him. Yeah, you you look at this and, and kind of being left out to dry. So what, what do you do? Like if you're Kenny Pickett, do, do you look at something like this and say, man, I'm not gonna go out there like uh gosh, I don't know why I blank on his name every single time, but the quarterback, Florida last year, big kid. Uh, war number Trask. 11. Yeah, Trask, Kyle Trask. So yeah, Kyle Trask go out there. Remember, he lost his whole supporting cast. He lost his receivers. He had like running backs not show up, cornerbacks, and they got blown out. He looked really bad. I don't know if, you know, obviously like, even, even for Kenny Pickett, we talk about him and how important this is. There's a ton of film. There's years of film on him. Mm-hmm. So, but this is when all eyes are going to be on him. And some guys are going to be able to just watch him live. And it's, when you're going through the evaluation process, it's one thing, you know, watching all 22 and just, you know, looking at it and evaluating that, you know, every throw and looking at it, you know, it, it's a whole nother thing to see it live, see it in action, see how things play out, feel the game, like feel the vibe of the game and, and feel the moxie of the quarterback. That's a whole nother thing. So this is the time now where a lot of NFL scouts, they're going to watch him live and see what that looks like and how he carries himself. And he potentially is going to have to do that without his office coordinator. Would you think about potentially opting out of this game if you were Kenny Pickett? Man, if I was Kenny Pickett and I'd gone through all this, I personally wouldn't. But I won't blame him if he does. They have, even to this point, when we're recording this Tuesday night, they haven't named who's going to call the plays. Is it going to be Kenny? 
Because if it's Kenny, then in my mind, I'm like, they're going to let me run the show. I'm going to do it myself. Even if I don't have the performance that I've had, at least I can show that leadership quality. At least I can show them, hey, I can go run an offense if you let me. I That might be a, a, a reason to stay. I don't know. Well, they do have my guy, Brendan Marion. Shout out to Brendan Marion. He's a, <laughs> a former receiver over at Tulsa. I believe it was uh, where Brendan played at. But, uh, yeah, he played at Tulsa, played receiver, had a stint in the NFL. But now he's been coaching since. 2011, and he's been all over the place, whether it's junior college coaching receivers, high school coaching receivers, uh, also ended up being, you know, quality control coach at Arizona State. He's been at Oklahoma Baptist. Howard University actually was an officer coordinator and quarterbacks coach. All right, this is important. Howard University, officer coordinator and quarterbacks coach. William and Mary, officer coordinator and quarterbacks coach. And then, and then eventually he went to Hawaii receiver coach and Pittsburgh receiver coach. So, if, if they are looking for someone that potentially can call plays and kind of be that voice to the quarterback and understands the quarterback in that position, and obviously the quarterback and the receivers are intertwined, maybe it's Brendan Marion that kind of comes in and, and takes over that role for this last game. I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be too far-fetched. And for Brendan, who I think is a terrific offense of mine, he has his own offense called like the go-go offense. Nobody mm. talks about it, but he has his own offense, really br bright offensive of minded guy. This might be his opportunity to audition for the offensive coordinator position at Pittsburgh. Sure, or or elsewhere, uh, or especially elsewhere. if you have a talent like Kenny that is up there at the top. Maybe that's the perfect like melding of of getting you both in the direction that you want to go in what might be the biggest showcase of either of your careers, at least to this point. What What do you think about Kenny Pickett the fake slide? I. I'm just glad he didn't hurt himself, to tell you the truth. I mean, reminded me of Elway, to tell you the truth. Like, it was not <laughs> agile. I would not put that word out there. But good for him for thinking of it. That's using your brain and maximizing what athleticism you have. Good for him. Don't do it again. You're going to blow something out, man. Made me nervous. Yeah, it was like a – and then he kept going. I'm not going to lie. It pissed me off and it pissed off a lot of other people on Twitter because, yeah. I, you know, I look at these through the eyes of a defensive guy, right? And I'm looking in – and they cater everything – to the quarterbacks and the safety of everybody. So when you go to slide, guys, ease up. Because if we mm -hmm. touch you, they may throw a flag. And he fakes like he's going down. And he goes and, and he runs for like a 60-yard touchdown or whatever it was. I will say, the thing I am impressed with is just the, the athleticism, right? To know that you have a quarterback that has that type of ability. I'm still upset about the fake slide. But terrific job by Kenny Pickett, man. I know we're going to get to him and a bunch of other quarterbacks. I can't wait to see how this situation plays out. Oh, my God, Brendan Marion, man. Hope my guy gets a shot. <laughs> but uh, first, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about this. All right, we got Super Bowl 56 at SoFi in less than 100 days. It's less than 100 days away. I hope it's the 49ers going. You probably hope it's the Chiefs going. If it is, <laughs> we might have to look into it. But the official hospitality partner of the NFL is the only place to score a once-in-a-lifetime Super Bowl ticket and – experience package all right now you're going to select your exact seats that you want choose from the elite experiences of featuring an exclusive pregame celebration with nfl legends five-star la hotels and food by the and uh by the great wolfgang puck all right visit on location exp.com slash sb56 for more information or search super bowl on location all right that's on location, exp.com slash SB56 or Super Bowl locations. And again, man, I, I, I hope it's the, the 49ers. That'll be something really cool to talk about. The 49ers make it to the Super Bowl. But that might be something good to bet on right now, right? And I'm pretty sure 49ers Super Bowl odds probably low. And where you can find those odds, bet online. That has you covered for all season props and more. Odds, props, uh, lines. And they have more than ever before as the football season continues to march through the playoffs. All right. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all sports action this season. Head over right now to the new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code locked on to receive your bonus. All right. And from basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, right down to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of this amazing offer that's available throughout the 2021 season. All right, BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports, even if it's betting on the 49ers to go to the Super Bowl. You got, got good odds right now if you make that money. All right, now, BetOnline. 
that's where the games start. And speaking of the games starting, we have games stopping for a certain guy, and that is K. Von Thibodeau, the outstanding edge rusher out of Oregon. He said, I'm done. I've done enough. I'm not playing in this bowl game. I'm opting out of it. I'm taking my talents to the NFL. When you hear something like that, man, what are, what are your first thoughts? It makes me cringe. I got to tell you. Yeah. It just, I want to see, I want to see the showcase, especially for him in this season. We started out calling him the number one overall selection when this Hands show down. started in September, right? Super easy to say it then as it's creeped on. Now he's not even the number one edge, at least not on my board. So like I, there's an opportunity for him to grab that back and, Obviously, like you said before, same thing with Kenny, Kenny Pickett, with all the eyes on you in a bowl game where you can get all the exposure and make your point, make your case to get back to there. Like, I, I don't know how his teammates feel about it when your leader is like, hey, it's been fun, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to hit you on this last one. That that would make me mad. Now, yeah. maybe it's a different locker room. Y'all are friends and whatever. And however you do it, you do it. But for me, I, I'm disappointed in the decision. Yeah, you know, and, and that used to be my train of thought. And I, I remember the first time that I – I think this is the first time it happened, or at least the first time I noticed it was with Leonard Fournette, Christian McCaffrey, mm -hmm. and those were guys that were like, oh, we're not playing in the bowl game. I'm not, not playing with the bowl game. You didn't play this whole season. You're letting your guys down. They all work together, and I know how it is, and you know how it is. I mean, you've done strength and conditioning for, you know, different programs and just the blood, sweat, tears that goes into preparing for a season for one goal, and it's either to win a championship or – Win a big game. And those bowl games, listen, I know, you know, everybody puts the, the big games on the pedestal, the big bowl games or the, the national championship, and people feel like if you don't win those, it's all for nothing. But those other bowl games, man, like they are really cool to go to for the guys. They get a whole bunch of stuff, and they get to put on, you know, display one last time, most of these guys. And I thought about those guys originally. But – since then, and we see it regularly now, guys opting out left and right, I have changed my tune and thought more about the player and the business aspect of it. So you see some of these guys, and I do feel some guys, I don't want to say they have no business opting out, but there are some guys like Marco Wilson, right, where he kind of, he had an up and down year. And, you know, ultimately, I believe Marco was like a fourth round pick to Arizona, starting right now for Arizona, so maybe it doesn't matter. But you know, it was like, Marco, shouldn't you be playing in this bowl game? He's like, nah, man, I'm opting out, right? Um, you know, I do think that there's an opportunity for some of these guys to improve their draft stock. But maybe some other guys, it's like, man, it's a business decision. It was for Marco. He's drafted. He's where he's supposed to be. He's starting for Arizona. He's doing a terrific job. Kayvon Thibodeau, we'll see how it all plays out for him. But right now, I, I do think he believes, and probably other people, like, man, there's nothing else that you could put on film right now that's going to change the way that we feel about you. Everybody's going to evaluate his talent, uh, his film. They know the talent. They know the ability. They know the size. He's listed at 6'5", 258 pounds. Uh, they, they know how he's coming off of the edge, how he's screaming off that edge. And he's going to let just what he's done so far to this point do all the talking for him when it comes to draft time. But as a spectator, as someone that covers the draft, as somebody that's going to be watching all this, it would have been fun to watch him one last time against some big time competition. Right. And I know that there's, there's outside circumstances, right? Like coaching carousel, crystal ball's going to Miami. Right. So like, I understand like there's a coaching change going on with you too. Can you really play at your best in that situation? I get that. There's always the risk of injury. I get that too. Especially when you're looking at being a, a top 10 pick, that is a significant business decision. My only thing is it just for the guys that you've been there with for the last not just the last season, the last three seasons, you know, like who's going to pay that off? Does this make your other guys like more susceptible? There's DBs in this game. They're going to have a harder time because he's not in that ball game that maybe need that evaluation to get invited to senior bowl or East West or, or, or get a shot at a roster. You know what I mean? So I, I'll, I'll be just stuck where you were before. I'll, I'll grow. I promise. <laughs> right. We'll get there. We're, we're, we're a little bit more old school in our, in our thought process. Me too. Even though I'm 34 years old. So I feel like I should be a little bit more connected to some of these younger guys in their early twenties. But even then I still have a hard time with it on a daily basis. And I deal with it with my kids, kids I train and all that stuff. But uh, man, when we come back, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we build a defense. We're talking about Kayvon Thibodeau and him opting out. There's other edge rushers. Uh, you know, let's talk about how we mirror that with the linebackers, with the secondary. 
how do we prioritize building the defense through the draft? We're going to get to all that and more. But first, I want to talk to you guys about our good friends over at Built Bar, right? And Built Bar, I mean, they're ready right now for the holiday season. Grab your protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar. You know, Built Bar is filled with so much holiday goodness, rich and decent flavors, covered in 100% real chocolate, but amazingly low calories, sugar, net carbs, and fat, but high in the right thing. It's high in protein. So really, you get the best of both worlds. You know, deliciousness and it's healthy. And if you're like me right now, I'm trying to get healthy. I got like 20 pounds to lose. Built Bar is going to get me there because I'm always trying to snack. What am I going to snack on? Built Bar. And they have all these amazing flavors. Cookies and cream, peanut butter brownie, mint brownie, cherry gar barcia, you know, double chocolate, raspberry. You know, one of my favorites, salted caramel. That's the one that's going to get me through this tough time and trying to change the way I eat right now. You know, Built Bar gives you that extra fuel that you'll need when you guys are at the mall and you guys are doing all your holiday shopping right now. You know, don't stop at the pretzel place. Don't stop at Cinnabon Bun. Where are you going to stop? You're going to stop right by where you have in your pocket, in your purse, and grab you a Built Bar. All right? You have it in your jacket, wherever you need. Stash that away so that you're not out there and, you know, swayed and, and kind of, you know, wanting to eat a lot of bad stuff that they have out there in those malls while you're shopping. You know, you can't can't go can't go shopping and be hangry. All right, so grab your Bilt Bar. That's definitely going to help, you know, because it's a season of peace and love, you know, and with everything that's going on right now, you see Santa, hey, tell Santa, stuff some of those stockings with some more Bilt Bars. All right, now, some of you guys might like the new flavors they have, like marshmallow treats for the holidays. Listen, you need to get your hands on the Built Bar Puffs. Those ones are new. They are light. They are fluffy. They are marshmallow-y. And through and through, really delicious. So different flavors, all covered in chocolate, taste so good, you won't believe they are filled with protein. What are you going to do to get this, man? You guys are going to do this amazing offer by going to Built.com and using promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off of your order today. Again, use LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, man. I'm always hangry. I'm just going to tell you that right Are now. Are you? I, I'm one that I always want to snack too. I actually, I'm like, man, I know I love snacking so much. So I, I bought like this big thing of like mixed nuts and it's just, all right, just like snack on that a little bit. And so I won't be tempted to just go in to the snack cabinet where all my kids uh, snacks are in the pantry. Uh, I need the built bars, the built bars. That's what's going to help me get through as well. I tell you what, my kids are a little bit older. They, they eat them out from under me. Like the samples, yeah. they're gone. I don't get to taste them most of the time. Yeah. So we, we, we want to talk about building defense. And I've had this philosophy. And I, I, want to, I want to get your opinion on it and how you think. I look at the NFL right now and just how difficult it is to cover. We're seeing pass interference is being called left and right. Uh, the game is so wide open. It's spread out. If you listen to, you know, NFL – quarterbacks talk the old the old guys like the hall of famers they talk about how they would love to play in today's game because it's so spread out it makes you like the quarterbacks are much more efficient as passing uh passers the rules definitely lean more towards offense and not more <laughs> towards coverage right so it's, it's really difficult to have good coverage so my thing is knowing that knowing how hard it is to play defensive back in general i would actually build from the front back i I would have a really hard time taking any defensive back over a top tier rusher. Like even if it's just close, I'm probably going with the edge rusher because I feel like they impact games more on a play to play basis because of how difficult it is to play in the secondary. What are kind of your thoughts or philosophies on that? Do you have a response to that, or or what what do you think about it? You know, I I used to think like that um, till probably two three seasons ago when we started hearing about the the sub two point for 2.2 seconds to throw right now it's tough and it's interesting that you say edge rusher too because now it's even tougher for the edge rushers to affect passers because they're getting the ball out so fast the spread actually helps them so they don't have to deal with some of the, the pass rushers now i feel like the elite guys that are able to affect the quarterback are inside like aaron donald and chris jones in the league mm -hmm. right because it's a yeah. shorter distance to the quarterback so i've kind of flipped Whereas now I want a guy that I used to be like, let's let's play man cover. If I'm if I'm calling, we're gonna play man. I'm gonna give you a single high and help you out a little bit, and I'm gonna attack with everybody else. Now it's like I want guys that can play zone and confuse the quarterback to get him to hesitate a little bit and try to help the rush get there. And so I'm kind of the reverse at this point. 
So, so when you, I want to ask you this, right? And for the, you, those of y'all out there listening, you guys can answer this as well. If you had a choice between the number one corner in the class and the number one safety, let's say they're on an even playing field, because typically most people want to lean towards the corner, right? But they're even playing field. You think they're both just, we'll say Kyle Hamilton and, I don't know, the kid from LSU, cornerback from LSU. Stingley. Stingley, Derek Stingley Jr. All right, so you got Kyle Hamilton and Derek Stingley Jr. You have to pick one. Who are you taking? Oh, man, that's a tough one. The the guy that helps you more and supports the rest of your secondary is the safety. Yeah, but but the guy that can erase half the field is the corner. And like, he's, so this this is a great conversation because this brings me back to where I am right now. How much better does the safety have to be than a good corner? Like what's what's the the relative value, right? So even more so between edge rushers, corners, and now the safety's creeping in there. It's got to be what has that guy got? It's not the class. It's not the position. Like is Hamilton that much better than a beat up Stingley because we haven't seen him in God knows how long? Like that's my next question. We'll probably get into that next week. How do you evaluate a guy in today's league that's been out that much? Yeah, that that's gonna be tough, and that's what. Everybody's going to have, you're going to have to look at it. You're going to have to see where he's at. You know, is he able to work out? Is he able to go through all that? And we'll get into that more. But you know what, man? I'm I'm, I'm leaning towards the safety because mm -hmm. I, I just feel like I have to value a little bit more a, a guy who can affect the game at all levels, at all levels on any given play. Cornerback, you can put them in a bind. You can screw up their rules. They're calling pass interferences on these guys. I need a safety that makes plays. You look at Look at the way Kyle Hamilton plays, and we'll we'll get into him some more. But just his range that he has, and you know, he can start from over here, and you can throw it over here on Derek Stingley, but then he gets over to it and he can pick it off before Stingley gets there. Just his knack of getting to the ball, making plays, but not just that, he affects the game, the run game as well, where he's coming down and making tackles behind the line of scrimmage. So I just feel like it's so hard to be a cornerback in the NFL right now. If I did have to pick one position to kind of start off with. I'm definitely going safety because I feel like they just they, – they affect the game. They can affect the game a little bit more, especially if it's a good one. Cornerbacks, look at Trevon Diggs. As good of a year as he's had, nine interceptions. Amazing. He's, you know, he's still giving up the most yards in the NFL, and he's being called for a ton of penalties. You know, so it's like, right. let me get it. Can I get a safety that can impact the game that well and maybe cover up a cornerback that might, might be slightly less? That, that's the big thing, right? It's the help. Like, are you, So at this point, you're more comfortable having a guy that can help everybody out from the top position, and maybe you, you relegate yourself to having not as good corner play as long as you have – maybe you need two guys if you're going to play two high shells all the time and play some of those deeper zones. But it, does that help you build a better defense from where you're sitting right now? I think so, because you just yeah. can do so much with safeties in today's game. Because not just that. I mean, we talked about sitting in the too high, right? But you also have guys that could drop down. Look at Daxton Hill out of Michigan. I mean, he's a guy people are projecting to potentially play in, in the nickel spot. So we're talking about he could play safety. He could potentially play nickel. You're talking about blitzing him off the edge. He's affecting the pass. You know, he, he's, he's getting involved in the run game. But also, he could drop back, get interceptions from there. He shows terrific range. I just think it's it's just the safety position is so impactful. And it's just it's nothing against cornerbacks. I play cornerback. I was a bigger cornerback, 6'2, 200 pound cornerback. It's so hard to play. I could never play in today's game. They would call holding on me <laughs> there every play. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then if you hit somebody too hard, they they throw a flag on that. So give me the safety that's has the range and he's able to, you know, get a beat on where the quarterback's at and pick off the ball. No, we haven't talked about the linebacker position. Do you have any take on linebacker position or like preference and what you would look for from a, from that? I want it all. Linebacker is my favorite spot because if you don't have a guy that can get to the passer up front, maybe you can blitz him, especially today in the A gaps. Send your best linebacker. You got a Michael Parsons. Yes, he's he's shifted out there to the edge, but if he's off ball, you can still send him. He can still get home. You're seeing the Kobe Dean do the same thing right now for Georgia. Like, how important is the blitz when you have to send five and you get to put a linebacker straight up one of the A gaps? I think that's one of the most effective ways to get to the quarterback right now. So that's huge. But you also got to be able to turn around and run with somebody. You still got to be able to cover. It's harder than ever right now to be a linebacker in this league. And I think it's only getting 
getting worse. It's only getting more hybridized, right? The run's only getting de-emphasized more. And that makes things harder. And it's funny because just like the safety position, I think, and I get where you're coming from, going safety over the corners. But the problem is both these positions, linebacker and safety, there's not as many top-tier blue-chip prospects in each class. So if you're going to get a guy, it pushes Hamilton up. It pushes Lloyd and Dean up because there's just not that many guys that can play all of this and do the things that you need them to do to support everybody else. So I think that's an interesting offshoot of, yes, if you if you value them well, you value almost have to overvalue them because there's so few of them. All right. That's something we're going to figure out. And I, I want to see how the scouts, how they see it. And are, will you be at the Senior Bowl? I am working on it, yep. All right, well, I, I will be there, and I can't wait to rub shoulders with everybody and get some of their philosophies on this, all right? So we're going to talk more about that moving forward, the philosophies of building a defense and how they're prioritizing things and where guys start to kind of fall on draft, draft boards. Or is Kyle Hamilton going to be higher than a Derek Stingley? If so, why? Can't wait to get a lot of those guys' opinions on that. But that's going to do it for today's episode, man. We appreciate everybody for making us your first listen of the day. And also, after you get done with this, make sure you listen to Locked On NFL Chiefs with Ryan Tracy and also listen to Locked On 49ers with myself and Brian Peacock. But uh, until next time, we are out. Peace.